Hello, Grade Tens. Welcome back. Uh, so a lot of people still haven't done that test, but I've got to keep pushing forward here. Uh, we're starting a new unit today. It's called Right Angled Trigonometry. Um, so it's basically solving for sides and angles in right angled triangles. So sounds simple enough, and a lot of it is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, what I would like you to do, though, is just make sure we can do this. This is something you would have learned in Grade 8 or Grade 9 as a very handy skill to be able to solve these ratios. So I have two questions, and I would like you to pause and solve for x in both cases. Okay, hopefully you paused and tried it. Uh, so the goal here basically is to solve the equation, solve for x, or get x by itself. Uh, so in this case, we have x on the right-hand side of the equal sign, and we're dividing by a number. So to get rid of it, we multiply by that number. And as you remember, whenever we do something to one side of an equation, we have to do it to both sides. These cancel out, and we're left with x equals 28.4 times 2.1 divided by 9.8. And we get approximately 6.1 to one decimal place, because the original question was one decimal place. And if you look, the ratio should sort of match up, right? Like these are equivalent. Uh, the top here is 2, the bottom's about 10, so the top is smaller, the bottom's bigger, and over here the top should be smaller than the bottom, and it is, and 6, 12, 8, 24, 30, it's about 5 times, 4 and a half, 5 times. So that tells us the answer is correct. Uh, this one, this is the only trick that you might have, uh, the x is on the bottom, so the first thing we do is we switch everything so the x is on top. We always want the x to be on top. And now we multiply by whatever's on the bottom, which in this case is 5.3. And I'm using dots because they don't look like x's. They cancel, and x is going to be 8.9 no, 8 times 5.3 divided by 2.1. And I get about 22.5 in a giant calculator. About 22.5. And now if we look... Uh, the top is bigger, the bottom smaller, top has got to be bigger, so that tells me this is probably correct. All right, so as I mentioned, we're into a new unit, um, similar triangles and trigonometry. Uh, the first thing I was going to do is solving ratios. That is this. So if you need help with this, let me know and I'll give you a bunch of questions, okay? All right, now we're going to jump into some grade 9 angle review. Uh, so what I would love for you to do see how well you remember this, is for each one of these questions, they're not on your handout. Um, I want you to pause it, figure out this missing angle here, um, which goes from here to here. Uh, pause it, find the angle, and then unpause and see if you got it right. Okay, so for this one, x is going to be 180 degrees minus 46 degrees. And so x is going to equal 180 minus 46 is 134 degrees by SAT. So the supplementary angle theorem tells us that two angles on a straight line always add up to 180. Okay? All right, next up. Again, pause it, figure it out, and tell me how you knew it, or write down how you did it. What's your justification? All right, so here we go. So X is going to be 180 minus 114. And x equals, I'm going to say 66 degrees by, so these lines are parallel. I should have told you that. You can tell that they are. You assume that they are probably. Um, and that's going to be by C pattern slash co interior angles. Again, just something from grade 9. Next one. Okay, so please pause it solve it and come on back. So again, we're going to say that these two lines are parallel. I should have told you that again, but I didn't. Okay, so here we go. You can see a letter F on its side there. Uh, so for this one, we just say X equals 74 degrees by F pattern, or you could say corresponding angles. Okay, so that's co-interior. The C, F is corresponding. All right, next one, and this time I am going to tell you these lines are parallel. 
So please pause, solve for x, and unpause to see how you did. All right, so x is 55 degrees by x pattern or by opposite angles, and we can see the x is right here. And remember, these two angles are going to be the same, and these two angles would be the same. All right, solve for x. Okay, this time I see a backwards z, so we know that x is 71 degrees by z pattern, or you could say by alternate angles. All right, moving right along. Okay, we're done. All right, here we go. We've got some definitions um, and some examples. Uh, some of the examples, most of them actually I'll probably leave for later in the unit. This will be a good thing for you to do review time is to make examples for each of these. Uh, so let's try and fill them in. So the first one, triangles in which corresponding sides are proportional, they're enlargements or reductions of one another. Feel free to pause and try to fill these in if you want. You don't have to. Um, but that one is going to be similar triangles. And that is what we're going to do today. Similar triangles. Okay. So those are similar triangles. Uh, next one, the value of the ratio of corresponding side lengths in a pair of similar figures. This is called the scale Whoa. vector. So for example, if uh, two triangles are similar and one's just twice the size, the scale factor would be 2. Uh, so we can cross off scale factor. Uh, the angle between the horizontal and the line of sight when looking up. So this is going to be the angle of elevation. Okay. Uh, next one, the side that is directly across from an acute angle. That is going to be the opposite side. Okay. Uh, the side that is part of an acute angle in a right triangle, but is not the hypotenuse. Well, I'm sure if you take a minute and look, you will find that the only thing that fits there is the adjacent side. Okay, so we have now eliminated opposite side, angle of elevation, adjacent side. Next up, the branch of mathematics that deals with the properties of triangles and calculations based on these properties. That is trigonometry, or trigonometry as it's properly pronounced, I believe. And that is what we will do for our final unit of the course. And yes, we are in the last unit. Uh, ah, I'm sorry, I lied. We have another small unit after this if we have time. Um, in the past, I've missed it because of snow days. Uh, so we'll see how we do. But we don't have to do the culminating exam stuff. Um, so we might have time anyway. Okay. Uh, the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the length of the hypotenuse. There's no way you know this yet. And you won't even learn it today. But that's the sine, S-I-N-E. And if you look at your calculator, there should be a button that says S-I-N. And that's the same thing, it's just been abbreviated. So let me group all those, go to the next page, and paste it in. Put it over top. Okay. So, uh, the ratio of the length of the adjacent side of the length of the hypotenuse, that is the cosine. The ratio of the length of the opposite side to the length of the adjacent side is the tangent. Again, these will be the most of this unit. Um, today we have a one-off similar triangle day, and after this it's just sine, cos, and tan. You can find them on your calculator. Or sine, cosine, tangent. They're full words. Uh, the basic ratios of trigonometry. Those are called the primary trigonometric ratios. And if you go on to 3U next year, you'll go beyond sine, cos, and tan a little bit. Um, but if you, uh, if you don't, uh, you'll only deal with the primary ratios. So let's go ahead and get rid of the stuff that we know. We did that one. We did that one. We did this one. The reverse of an original statement is the inverse. And the angle looking down, angle of depression. And again, I'm going to save the examples for later on in the unit. Uh, or I'll just make it a review exercise for you to do on your own. All right. 
Next up, similar triangle time. Um, so I'm just going to kind of launch into this real quick. It's very easy. Um, I did it in the grade 10 applied course as well, and I think students do quite well with it in general in the academic and the applied course. Uh, so first, given two triangles that are similar, the following statements are true. Um, before we do that, it's very important that we label these three sides. I don't know if this has come up with you folks or not, but the way that we label sides in a triangle is we label them based on the angle that's across. So this will be side little b. Straight across from A will be side little a. And straight across from C will be side little c. And I kind of feel like we did this in unit two, um, way back when, uh, analytic geometry. Um, so hopefully this is familiar. I mean, the reason we can't call this side A or C is because how would you pick, right? It has both of these vertices. And the reason I don't call it AC is because when you're doing algebra, if you have AC, it looks like you have two variables. But really, we only want one. Um, and then in this one here, this is going to be side P. Q goes across, and R goes across this way. Okay, here we go. Given any two triangles that are similar, so in this case, I have said that triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR. Now, if you look at them, this actually isn't the case. I really should have fixed this diagram, but sadly, I didn't. Let me show you what two similar triangles should look like. So here's a triangle. Now, these two triangles are exactly the same, but if I enlarge one, they're no longer the same, but they are similar. So what can you say about the angles of the little guy and the angles of the big guy? Well, we know that they both add to 180, but we can also say that these three angles are the same as these three angles in that order. And if we make this bigger, or way smaller, it will still be similar, because when we shrink it back up, it will look the same, and it will line up. Okay, so that's what similar triangles are. It's a very simple concept. It's kind of like if you were going to draw, make a scale drawing of your house. Um, and if you did a good job, your drawing should be similar to your house in that all the angles are the same. So corresponding angles are equal. So given this statement, triangle ABC is similar to triangle PQR, we can say that angle A equals angle P, angle B equals angle Q, and angle C equals angle R. Now, to do this, we don't look at the triangles at all, because sometimes one of them might be flipped around or upside down or whatever. So what really matters here is this. This similarity statement is the absolute key to solving these problems. All right, and this also says that the ratios of corresponding sides are equal. So that means if we take side little a and divide the length by side little p, that's going to equal the length of b over the length of q, and that's going to equal the length of c over the length of r. Um, and that is going to help us to solve some problems. Um, and it says here the ratio of the areas is equal to the ratio of corresponding sides squared. So for example, if the sides are doubled, area is quadruple. If the sides are quintupled, so times 5, the area is times is 25 times larger. Okay, so you just take the difference in the sides and you square it. And that's because when you enlarge a triangle, you're enlarging the base and you're enlarging the height. So if you think about the area of a triangle, it's base times height divided by 2. Ignore the divided by 2. It doesn't factor in here. So if you double the base and you double the height, then you're doubling, doubling. If you triple the base and you triple the height, then you're tripling, tripling again, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay? I'm going to do some problems. So if you're not there yet, you will be. All right, here we go. Determine the value of x and y. So, y goes from here to here, and x goes from here to here. So the first thing that we need is we need a similar triangle statement. So let's say triangle, and we'll do the big guy first. So D, B, A 
is similar to, now we have to say that it's similar to this little triangle in order to do anything, but the question is, is it similar? So here's the big one, okay, and here's the little one, and we have to prove that they're similar. Well, first of all, they both have angle D, of course, right? Um, now, we have to prove that at least one other pair of sides is, uh, angles, sorry, is equal. Uh, so this is B, A, and the other one is D, C, E. So let's look at this angle here. I'll do it in purple. So this angle is an open circle. I'm just labeling the D like I did before. Um, is there an angle in the big triangle that's the same as this? Well, what you should note is that these two sides are parallel. So what you actually end up having here is an F pattern right here, which means that this angle has to be the same. We can do the same thing with the third angle. I'll make it a square in each. But I would argue that you don't actually need to find the third angle or explain that the third angle is equal because if two triangles have two angles that are the same, the third one has to be the same because they both add up to 180. So we're going to say that triangle DBA is similar to triangle. And now we list the angles in the little triangle that match. So D goes with D, obviously. Angle B goes with angle C. And angle A, A goes with angle B. E. So there is our similarity statement. And now once I show you the next thing, that's pretty much the whole lesson. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write the ratios of the sides. So D over D equals B over C equals A over E. You'll note that I did small letters, and that's because small letters are used for sides. Now, I'm going to call the big triangle number one and the big triangle number two. And the only reason I'm going to do this is because we can't say D and D because that's the same thing. So we'll call this D1 and we'll call this D2. Okay? And something else you might notice is if you go across the top, D, B, A, you'll get this triangle. And if you go across the bottom, you'll get D, C, E. Okay? Now what we do is we plug in all the numbers that we know. So D1, D1 is going to be in the big triangle, it's going to be this big side from B to A. We don't know what that is. It's labeled X. So X over D2 is going to be this side from C to E in triangle 2. And it is 6.0 equals little b. So little b is going to be this whole big side here. So it's 3.6 plus Y. That's weird, over little c. So little c is going to be 3.6 equals, and now we need uh, little a. So little a is going to be this whole big side here. Now check this out. This whole big side here is going to be 8 plus 6, so 14. And little e is just going to be the little guy, and that's going to be 6.0. Okay, now we're ready to solve. So what I would say first is that we have a ratio where we know everything. And that's, that's key. If you don't have that, you can't do anything. Um, and then if we look at the first ratio with x, well, we're only missing one thing. So let's find side x first. So side x um, is going to be x over 6.0. And we set it equal. This is 0, 0.0, I guess. It doesn't matter, uh, over 6.0. Uh, and now we're going to solve. So to solve, we multiply on both sides by 6.0. And we get x equals 14 times... Oh, these 6's cancel. x is just 14.0 centimeters. Pretty simple. Awesome. Okay. 
now now we have to solve for this weird missing side here so for side y okay so for side y that's just part of this so check this out instead I'm gonna solve for this whole big side here okay and I'm gonna call it side B because it is side B so B over 3.6 I'm just taking this ratio and replacing this top part because that top, top part is super ugly. It equals 14.0 over 6.0. I multiply by 3.6 on both sides. These cancel out. And I get 14 times 3.6 divided by 6. I get 8.4. And then I can say, therefore, y equals, so if we just want to find this bit, we take the whole side, 8.4, and we subtract 3.6. And I get 4.8. And there you go. So that's like kind of the harder type of these problems. So let's do a couple more. And then I'm just going to give you one sort of basic standard one at the end. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and I'm going to label each corner. Because if I'm going to do anything with this, I have to find similar triangles. So I know that these two angles are the same by X pattern. And I can see a Z pattern here, right? Because these lines are parallel. So this and this are the same. And if we have two pairs of angles that are the same, it has to be the case that the other angles are the same. Okay? So now we can say triangle, and let's just do this. Uh, a, B, C is similar. And now we just list the angles and the other one in order. So A comes first. That matches with B. Uh, B is next. It's the purple one, and that's going to match with D. And C is the last one, obviously. So we write our ratios of sides. So A over E equals B over D equals C over C. And again, I'm going to have to call this 1 and this 2. So this is going to be C1 and the little one and C2 and the big one. Now let's plug everything in. So side A is here, and we don't know that, so it's going to stay as A. Side E, uh-oh, is here, and we don't know that. And it's worth mentioning that if you ever have a ratio where you don't know anything, you cannot solve that ratio ever, unless it's right angles and you can do Pythagorean theorem. But in this case, it's not, so we will never know these sides. It's very, very sad, very sad but true. Uh, and now B, little b is 5. Little d, well, that's what's been labeled x. Now, this ratio is useless. This ratio has our unknown. For, for, so for this problem to be solvable, we have to get both of these. So c1 is going to be the little c, and it's going to be 4. And c2 is going to be from angle c here, right? This is angle c. Um, i get rid of that. It's ugly. Uh, it's 14. So now, to solve for side x, we have 5 over x equals 4 over 14. x is on the bottom. That's bad. So we flip it on both sides. We multiply by 5. The 5's cancel, and x is going to be 14 times 5 divided by 4. 17.5, 17.5 centimeters. And then we look at the diagram. Does that make sense? This is 14, 17.5, I guess. I guess that's fine. We can imagine this triangle swinging down. And if, if this triangle swings down, the 4 and the 14 match up as similar. And the 5 is going to loop all the way over to here. So the 5 is bigger than the 4. 
So the x is bigger than 14. x is bigger than 14, even though the diagram doesn't look it. I just made these numbers up. Um, but that is going to be our answer. Um, and I'm not going to give you another question for this um, if you don't want. Um, you know what? I'm not going to. Because I think if you can follow this one, the rest of them will be very straightforward. Uh, the other questions will basically look like this. A, B, and C. X, Y, Z. You'll be told that triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle X, Y, Z. And let's say this was like 7, 13, and this is B. And then this would be like 22, and this would be, I don't know, 17, and this would be Z. And they'd say, solve for the missing sides. Uh, you would just go A over X. I think I'm just giving you another, another example here. So if you don't watch it, you don't watch it. But if you want a little more help, you can watch from here. Uh, now we plug everything in. So again, ABC was similar to XYZ. So I took these letters, made them small into sides. Uh, so little A is 13. X is 17. We have a complete ratio, so that's good. Little B is just little B. We don't know it. Y is 22, and C is 7, and Z is Z. Okay, now we're missing two things. We'll solve for side B. So we need B over 22 equals, and we always, always take the ratio that we know. So to solve for B, it's being divided by 22. So we multiply by 22 on each side. And we get 13 times 22 divided by 17, about 16.8. And then we solve for side z. And whenever you're solving for a side, you always need the ratio with that side. And you always need a complete ratio. And I use the original one. I suppose you could use the one that we just found, um, the b. But of course, if you did, you'd be rounding because there's a lot of decimal places there. And then to solve for z, finally, we multiply by 7 on both sides. And we get 17 times 7 divided by 13 is about 9.2 if you bump up that uh, 1 5. Okay, and then we look at the thing. Yeah, 9.2 makes sense here, close enough. And here, this looks like the longer side, and it is longer. Okay, so that's, that's it, folks. Uh, that's similar triangles. Uh, it's a very small part of this unit. Um, we'll do some problem solving with it tomorrow. So if you don't get it yet, uh, well, ne probably next week, because this is Wednesday's lesson, and I'll probably just do the one this week, um, because the test has taken so long. Uh, so please do try this homework over the next uh, four or five days, and I will post another lesson on Monday, and we'll get back to normal for the last couple of weeks. For all of you that are still watching and doing this stuff, thank you. Uh, and really, you should be uh, patting yourselves on the back because when you come into 3U or 3C next year, you're going to really be glad that you took the time to do this now. Um, so if your friends aren't doing it, tell them that they should um, because it will really make a big difference and it'll make grade 11 math so much easier. Um, and if you don't do it now or if your friends aren't doing it now, the videos will be here, right? They can watch them over the summer uh, or whatever. Um, just keep doing your best, and please ask for help if you need it. Okay, thanks, folks.